Chapter 22 For three years there was no war between Aram and Israel. Then during the third year King Jehoshaphat of Judah went to visit King Ahab of Israel. During the visit Ahab said to his officials, Do you realize that the Arameans are still occupying our city of Ramoth-Gilead? And we haven't done a thing about it. Then he turned to Jehoshaphat and asked, Will you join me in fighting against Ramoth-Gilead? And Jehoshaphat replied to King Ahab, Why, of course, you and I are brothers, and my troops are yours to command. Even my horses are at your service. Then Jehoshaphat added, But first, let's find out what the Lord says. So King Ahab summoned his prophets, about four hundred of them, and asked them, Should I go to war against Ramoth-Gilead or not? They all replied, Go right ahead. The Lord will give you a glorious victory. So Jehoshaphat asked, Isn't there a prophet of the Lord around too? I would like to ask him the same question. King Ahab replied, There is still one prophet of the Lord, but I hate him. He never prophesies anything but bad news for me. His name is Micaiah, son of Imlah. You shouldn't talk like that, Jehoshaphat said. Let's hear what he has to say. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Quick, go and get Micaiah, son of Imlah. King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in their royal robes, were sitting on thrones at the threshing floor near the gate of Samaria. All of Ahab's prophets were prophesying there in front of them. One of them, Zedekiah, son of Kinaanah, made some iron horns and proclaimed, This is what the Lord says. With these horns you will gore the Arameans to death. All the other prophets agreed. Yes, they said. Go up to Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, or the Lord will give you victory. Meanwhile the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, Look, all the prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. But Micaiah replied, As surely as the Lord lives, I will say only what the Lord tells me to say. When Micaiah arrived before the king, Ahab asked him, Micaiah, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or not? And Micaiah replied, Go right ahead. The Lord will give the king a glorious victory. But the king replied sharply, How many times must I demand that you speak only the truth when you speak for the Lord? So Micaiah told him, In a vision, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, Their master has been killed. Send them home in peace. Didn't I tell you? The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, He does it every time. He never prophesies anything but bad news for me. Then Micaiah continued, Listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heaven around him, on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who can entice Ahab to go into battle against Ramoth Gilead so that he can be killed there? There were many suggestions, until finally a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. How will you do this? the Lord asked. And the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all Ahab's prophets to speak lies. You will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of your prophets, for the Lord has determined disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Kineana, walked up to Micaiah and slapped him across the face. When did the Spirit of the Lord leave me to speak to you? He demanded. And Micaiah replied, You will find out soon enough when you find yourself hiding in some secret room. King Ahab of Israel then ordered, Arrest Micaiah and take him back to Amon, the governor of the city, and to my son Joash. Give them this order from the king. Put this man in prison and feed him nothing but bread and water until I return safely from the battle. But Micaiah replied, If you return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added to those standing around, Take note of what I have said. So the king of Israel and king Jehoshaphat of Judah led their armies against Ramoth Gilead. Now king Ahab said to Jehoshaphat, As we go into battle, I will disguise myself so no one will recognize me. But you wear your royal robes. So Ahab disguised himself, and they went into battle. Now the king of Aram had issued these orders to his thirty-two charioteers. Attack only the king of Israel! So when the Aramean charioteers saw Jehoshaphat in his royal robes, they went after him. Where is the king of Israel? They shouted. 
But when Jehoshaphat cried out, the charioteers realized he was not the king of Israel, and they stopped chasing him. An Aramean soldier, however, randomly shot an arrow at the Israelite troops, and the arrow hit the king of Israel between the joints of his army. Get me out of here! Ahab groaned to the driver of his chariot. I have been badly wounded! The battle raged all that day, and Ahab was propped up in his chariot facing the Arameans. The blood from his wound ran down to the floor of his chariot, and as evening arrived, he died. Just as the sun was setting, the cry ran through his troops, It's all over! Return home! So the king died, and his body was taken to Samaria and buried there. Then his chariot was washed beside the pool of Samaria, where the prostitutes bathed, and dogs came and licked the king's blood just as the Lord had promised. The rest of the events in Ahab's reign and the story of the ivory palace and the cities he built are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Ahab died, he was buried among his ancestors. Then his son Ahaziah became the next king. Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, began to rule over Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab's reign in Israel. He was thirty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem twenty-five years. His mother was Azubah, the daughter of Shilhai. Jehoshaphat was a good king, following the example of his father Asa. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. During his reign, however, he failed to remove all the pagan shrines, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. The rest of the events of Jehoshaphat's reign, the extent of his power, and the wars he waged are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. He banished from the land the rest of the shrine prostitutes, who still continued their practices from the days of his father Asa. There was no king in Edom at that time, only a deputy. Jehoshaphat also built a fleet of trading ships to sail to Ophir for gold. But the ships never set sail, for they were wrecked at Ezion Geber. At that time Ahaziah, son of Ahab, proposed to Jehoshaphat, Let my men sail an expedition with your men. But Jehoshaphat refused the offer. When Jehoshaphat died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Jehoram became the next king. Ahaziah, son of Ahab, began to rule over Israel in the seventeenth year of King Jehoshaphat's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria two years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight, following the example of his father and mother and the example of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had led Israel into the sin of idolatry. He served Baal and worshipped him, rousing the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, just as his father had done.